January 9th, 2023 um, for the Rochester Select Board meeting, which has been posted physically in three places mm -hmm. and on the website and emailed to interested parties, right? So we can move forward with this um, with this meeting. And I'd like to start off with the minutes from the last meeting of December 26. <clears throat> so there was one typo. Yeah, there was one typo and I found another one on the on the back page, just a little S on the end of your name. Oh yeah. yeah. Franks. Yeah, <laughs> Franks. <laughs> they want to confuse you with them. <laughs> Someone else. So, Hot dog. Yeah. I would um move to approve the minutes with those corrections. I second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. Okay. Good um, <clears throat> And um, we've got, um, well, the first item on the agenda is the treasurer's report of December. Thank you for putting that together. It um, looked pretty straight up with me. I, I didn't see any glaring issues, did you? No. No? Nothing that no, I didn't, won't I'd, be addressed pretty soon anyway. Right, right. So, <laughs> so I'd move to approve that. I second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. That one's for me. <clears throat> and comes on to the um, the crowd in the room with the library trustees. <laughs> Three's yeah. the crowd. Yeah. <laughs> we got the majority. Yeah. Um, which is um, exciting. The topic we get to talk about tonight, which is the um, the VDOL federal funding grant um, opportunity. Do you want to speak with? Sure. Where's that? Um, hi, I'm Kelly Kelly, yep. representing the, uh, I'm the chair of the Library of Trustees. Um, so back in December, uh, this Public Facilities Preservation Initiative grant was signed into law. Um, long story short, there's $10 million coming to the Vermont Department of Libraries to be used for rural library building maintenance issues, which is us. Yes. So we have a very once in a lifetime golden opportunity to access these funds. <clears throat> the um, the grant application has not been opened yet, but it will be any time. They anticipate sometime in January or February. Um, we need to jump on this immediately as soon as the application process is open. So with that being said, we're going to need estimates for the building issues that, we, that I've given you in the handout. Um, which we're all well aware of, and these issues yeah. are only getting worse. They're, you know, they're never going to get better. We have to deal with this. So, um, why I'm here tonight is, well, first of all, Jeff Gephardt has been working on a preliminary bid for a lot of this work, and unfortunately, he had a medical emergency today, so that's why he's not here. So, I'm kind of pinch hitting. So, mm -hmm. bear with me. Um, so, what we, what we're here to ask of you is that when he gets this bid packet together, or the preliminary bid, um, is for your approval to get the bids out. I mean, I don't know what the process is for you guys to advertise for bids for town buildings, but that's what, what we need, is just the commitment that we can do this, because we can't let this opportunity pass us yeah. by. So that's kind of where we're at. Uh... I don't know how the bids will work on something like that because nobody's going to give you a price from what we've checked into already because nobody knows the extent of the damage that's there. So okay. a Thank bid bid package is going to be tough to get that way. Um, I mean, we talked about it at length before with other people, and there's just nobody that's going to say it's going to cost you fifty thousand to do right. this because they just, they just don't know what the damage is. Well, I think Jeff. I, has a lot more insight into that because he's been yes. over there a I lot. I know he's been dealing so, with it quite a bit. So You know, he might have some more information than I would. Um, as to, and I, Again, the, the grant application process has not, been, has not been released yet, but as soon as it is, we're going to need to jump on it. So, right. Um, has there any water shown up in that bucket on the second floor? I don't know the answer to that. Jeanette, are you on Zoom? Do you know, Tony? She's got I her hand up. Seen any. I, I've never seen any either every time I've been up there. So I wonder if that is really an issue with that building. There's mm -hmm. no leaks inside anywhere else. I don't know. Go ahead. Jeanette? 
Frank, um, there's, you can see on the ceiling and you can see on the floor where there are water um, stains, I'll use the word, about is four years recent. ago now, um, Jim Anything Harvey went recent. up into the attic and removed a trash bag full of sopping wet insulation and identified exactly what the problem was, which has never been fixed. So over this time, I assume we're just getting more soggy insulation in the ceiling, but I think we need it, to check them. Let's we'll check them, we'll make sure. Okay. So we don't know what this, um, um, what this application looked like in terms of how everything yeah group. everything that's on this piece of paper is basically what we've got what we've got yeah so there's nothing that we haven't shown you mm -hmm. so um we're kind yeah. of in a holding pattern but the second it gets released we want to you know get yeah. on this yeah. so well so I'm all i don't know it, bids versus estimates you know, if we, even if it's not a specific bid for the, the job, if someone right. at least have an estimate of what the work would be, it might satisfy it to be able to submit the grant. Potentially, yeah. Yeah, yeah but like you said, Jeff has got more specific. But if, it, but if, it's, if they need actual bids, I don't know how long the bid process takes if you, when you guys put something out to bid. I mean, do you have to advertise it and it takes weeks, a month? Well, I mean. Depends on the cost. Yeah. Oh, the amount of you know anything over ten thousand have to get three bids on for gotcha. something like that. And how long do you usually um, take? You know, you you put it out to bid, and you have to have the bids by. Yeah, you two get weeks. three contractors to come in and look at it and give you three bids, or you put it out in the paper to see if you can get three contractors to come and even put a bid on it. Right. I did have a conversation with Nail and Breen over there because of that outside. Uh, looking at it is going to take a crew to do something with it. It's not going to be just some guy off the street that could do that project. It's a a lot bigger than than just one person. So um, you know we'll we'll do what we can. Right. So it says say. it says that you need estimates. So it's not really something right. at this point where you need to go out to bids before the grant. You would go out to bids after you have the money. Okay. Um, right now, you you do just need estimates, and they would just be what they are. Yeah. So I mean, estimate just, something. Just or get anybody to, give to you estimate it. A basis hour. for it. And then raise it right. a little. Yeah. yeah. Like Wait, 30 percent. Yeah. <laughs> well, I think that's what Jeff is doing is kind yeah, of right. getting together right. some numbers. So, yeah. um, and that would be your estimate. Well, actually, no, Jeff, what Jeff is trying to do is write up a draft um, of a advertisement looking for estimates. Mm -hmm. Right. Right. But that's still right. not going out the bids, real necessarily. You aren't going to get okay. it out. I'm sorry, yeah. here in Zoom land, we can't understand Patty and some of the other conversation. It's very muffled. You want to say what you said again? <laughs> Louder? <laughs> Don't go what you said. Thank you. There's still a difference between an estimate and a bid. So going out and seeking estimates, the contractor knows that he's not making a formal uh, do or die bid. He's just doing an estimate for this point in time. Um, some contractors don't mind doing that and others are a little allergic to doing estimates but um, everyone seems to recognize it as a necessary part of getting the job so if they do the estimate and you get the grant they potentially could end up getting the job so um, and this one has a 2026 date which could be attractive to somebody saying it's going out for three years you have three years to get this project done so if it was something that needed to be done by the end of 2023 it might be difficult to even get estimates from somebody but i think that uh, you have a lot of elbow room to help get that done i think our concern right. was, 
we have a Go nice ahead. long timeline to get the work completed, but we have an extremely short timeline on the grant application. They expect to do approvals this spring, um, but then yes, we do have a few years to actually do the work, but without the estimate to put on the grant application, um, you know, our hands are tied. But well, Jeff is out seeking those estimates, correct? Putting that package together. I, would, right. I guess I would I'll, um, I'll talk to him. encourage him to, to in the estimates, you don't have to necessarily put it's those in the binding. paper. You can go and start calling Naylor right. and Breen or what have you. Yeah, and just have get somebody some, look at you know, it, give you a rough yeah. ballpark. Yeah, so, so I, I think that's... Um, I encourage Jeff to to um, jump on that and whatever support we could we could offer. If he gives us a list of people to call or if he wants to do it, we could or you guys I do it. I think his plan is to get that done this week. Is that correct, Jeanette? Well, with two family members with critical medical issues, he wasn't able to make a commitment to finish by this the end of the week. Um, hopefully by next week, but. What we're looking for tonight is a commitment from the select board to, you know, immediately uh, put this out looking for estimates um, so we can have a very quick turnaround. So you want you want us to, to move Jeff's work aside and, and start doing this? Uh, no, I don't think that's what she means. Okay. No, but if we could, if, if Jeff is tied up, if he could hand okay. off his research and his list, you know, we could, um, I'm sure, you know, someone else could pick up the ball and run with it, you know, if he's, I guess it's a matter of, of how far he's progressed in terms okay. of, you know, who he thinks is approachable. Okay. I guess my question is, Dune. Will it be the select board who's contacting these contractors asking for estimates, or is it the library that is authorized by the select board to go out looking for the estimates? I would be happy to authorize the library to go out and look since they're very close to these projects and what, what, the, what the issues are. Are you good with that? Yeah, I'm fine with that. If they want to do it, I've got enough on my plate, that's for sure. But. Yeah, if they want to get estimates for that, that's fine. Go right ahead. And if you get in a situation where someone wants to hear it from the select board, not the library, but I would think it's, like I said, it's not a hard bid. It's just an estimate. So, um, and, and then also, as we're collecting these estimates, we would be developing a list of who to approach for bids in the future once the grant is awarded okay. i'm not going to say All might right. be awarded i think you'd have to talk to somebody for the outside there Jeanette, like bread loaf or or uh, i agree what's that i agree yeah Neil and breen, but Neil and breen bread loaf some, a bigger contractor that's for sure um Oh. Give you an estimate on right. one through five, all five points. They, yeah, yeah. They they would give you a, rather than piecemeal. Plus, right. this money will probably come with um, federal requirements, demands that a bigger that company a is company more likely do, uh, to to handle than just a small you know contractor. Right. Now, we have no idea. These are competitive bids. There is ten million dollars. We don't know how the Department of Library is going to uh, do this. Like if there's gonna be a, well, of course there'll be a ceiling on the amount that you can ask for, but if there is some sort of a match or if the amount of the grant is not the total amount of the estimate to do the work, um, I guess the question is, how much can the select board authorize? I don't know how much money is in the current building reserve account or any ARPA funds, but how much, I'll just call it, matching money would be available via the select board? Well, we'll discuss let's, it once we know what that number yeah, is. Let's cross that bridge when we get to it. <laughs> That's all we can do on that. 
Yeah, I think first um, we worry about getting our foot in the door for the money. One, one thing in our favor is I believe Rochester is um, identified as an economically depressed area, which is one of the um, highlighted features of um, their priorities for, for allotting this money. So, but in terms of what, right, the, what, what we can match, I guess we'll see what, you know, see how far we can go with what, what we get from them. And, and you know, as you can't really throw that number out now. Well, a lot of grant applications will actually have as part of the application the understanding of a match. Right. When we see that, then then we'll know what, where we stand, and then when we get the estimates, we'll know where we stand for the other half, the other half of the information. How much is it going to cost, and how much do we have to contribute? Okay. So once the grant application is in hand outside of a select board meeting, which of course are only every two weeks, who would have the authority to say if the grant application says we need a 20% match? So we know how much the estimate is, we know how much 20% is. I will well, need someone who can authorize signing off on a grant asking for a percentage of a match well again that when we'll cross that bridge when we get to it i mean we'd even though the the standard select board meetings are every two weeks when there are time sensitive issues we can we can hold a special meeting and, and deal with situations like that okay all right thank you dan yep Um, anybody else good? Anything to talk no. about there? All right. Thank you. It's an um, exciting opportunity. Yeah. It's, um, yeah. Sounds yeah. very We don't want the ship yeah. to sail yeah. without us. <laughs> Pardon me? We don't want the ship to sail without no, us. No, I think no, this is, yeah. I yeah. We have a Give it a try waiting. anyway. Yeah. Cool. about all we can do. Okay, thank you very much for yep. your time. Uh, the number three on our agenda is the annual highway mileage certificate, which is um, for the state just to keep track of whether we increased or reduced the miles of town highways, which I believe there has been no changes no this year. We haven't no changed changes. anything so yet. Just kind of roll along. So I guess we can um, set that, send that along. Okay. I second that. All in favor? Aye. 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 All right. And that's due February 20th, so we're really on top of that one, huh? Yeah. <laughs> Does that have to be signed? Um, I didn't see a signature on that, I think. Maybe on the back side, too. Yeah, on the back side, okay. We're going to fill in the blanks, too, I yeah. think, don't we? Okay, um, that was, um, I see we missed the number for discussion of the high school vote, but I think that slide in there, we'll call that 3.5. <laughs> yeah. Fair enough. Yeah. All right. Um, so we had tentatively months ago talked about perhaps folding the uh, a vote on whether or not the town would vote to acquire the high school building around the town meeting this year, this spring. And it's, uh, I believe, our feelings now that um, in light of what we have learned about the building and the fact that it's now in the Brella Brownfield program and awaiting even more information about what is to be uncovered, um, that, that we're we're still waiting more information and I don't think that it's time to have a vote yet. What do you guys think? I have something I can read. All right. Um, these are speak up for the hour there. minutes <laughs> from uh, a high school repurposing committee meeting from December 21st. And um, I will just read the message. It's not terribly long. Vic introduced Liz to the committee. Um, she is a consultant with much experience in Vermont community development projects. 
She has been retained for a limited period of time to assist the high school committee with creating a roadmap for continuing this project. Her experience tells her that with this type of project, there are typically many unpredictable twists and turns and that it takes much longer than expected to complete. Uh, Dick, Dick Robson provided an update on the floodplain and floodway issues and they have concluded that they have a solution in mind and that would include uh, further subdividing to remove the floodway from the flood and only have floodplain as a hazard. We think we can solve the problem by subdividing and removing the small parcel of high school land that lies in the floodway and giving it back to the school. Um, however, it's hard to know what agency will approve that as a solution and when. Liz advised that we not wait but begin now to pursue the subdivi subdivision. Um, the site will need to be surveyed um, to document the subdivision um, and again the all of the neighbors will need to be notified with a 30-day notice and um, then legal will have to take over. Um, so I anticipate that process alone to take up to three months. Liz shared her screen uh, showing a working draft of a schedule for the project um, having to do with the Brella project. It's, it's printed very small, but um, typically there are points that will be going beyond the town meeting day that um, may be points that we would not want to have unanswered for the town vote. Um, we would be presenting uh, information that's not complete at that time. Um, the hazmat testing is uh, has not started yet. It's going to start in February. It's not going to conclude until May. Um, the Brella the Brella project goes through the end of April, um, and the hazmat radiation remediation plan actually will take the better part of this year. So it all it looks as though we really are not in any further. Okay. All right. I'll. Information. Right, well, um, we don't have any further information than we did a year ago I'll, when I'll we decided know. not to okay. do the um, the vote last year. So um, I think that um, it it's it's unfortunate. It is the the wheels of government do turn very slowly sometimes, and um, that we would like to probably proceed, but. It just doesn't seem feasible that we would be proceeding or presenting the townspeople with any viable information for them to make a decision. If we don't even have this information ourselves and we we're, have our thumb right on what's going on here and we still don't have information that we should. Um, that call was from Catherine Shankman who says she's wants dialing to in. <laughs> dialed in and wants to talk. Um, I think it's a possibility that she disconnected because she's not here anymore. That number went away. That number went away? Yep. Um, um, I just have Martha, Robert, Okay, I'll Gardner, call her and, and tell her to sign up. Yeah, um, and Troy. Okay. Uh, um, in the meantime, Rob Gardner has his hand up. Can we take his? Um, sure. Yep, let me just yeah, can you hear hold me? On, hold on just one second, just one Rob. Second. I'm letting Catherine in now. Are you letting her in? Okay. Yep. All right. I just saw her. Okay, so Catherine's joining. Rob's got his hand up. You guys let me know what you want to do. Can you hear me? Um, yeah. Um, Catherine, we, I understand you're back in the, the meeting. We'll, um, we'll let Rob talk and then let you, um, I know, understand you have information to share. Okay. Go ahead, Rob. Am I on? Yes. Yep. I, I want to say it's almost impossible to hear Pat. I wonder if she could move closer to the, to the microphone or something. Try moving the mic a little bit closer to her. Is that yeah. is that better? Thanks. Is that better? I'm trying. Martha's shaking her head no. I think I hit a button. Looks like Where'd you button. hit? It looks like a mute button. If it's muted, it turns the whole thing turns red. Oh, okay. 
Yeah. It's all right. Yeah. Is there a plus button on there, like a plus or minus? Can There's you hit one the plus over here. a hundred times? Yep, it's on a hundred. It's showing on my computer. I don't know. But just talk louder, Pat. <laughs> all righty then. Can she get any... She's can you hear close. me now? She's only about three feet away from it, Rob. <laughs> okay. Can, can you hear me? Is is maybe maybe I should talk lower. <laughs> no. So. And I thought this was just my husband's problem. <laughs> maybe, can you hear me? Maybe it's in his house. Uh, Rob's back on mute. Did you? Is that all you? The internet couldn't. Is that all you there. had, Rob? Was to let us know that? No questions. Well, yeah, except almost all of her presentation about the high school building, I couldn't hear, so. But I don't think she needs to do it again. I'm just complaining. Uh, oh. Can, can you hear me at all now? Uh, it, very low. I can hear you. Yeah, I can understand you, but you're quite low. But you're better than you were. Thank you. Okay. Um, what I was saying is that I was, I was speaking for minutes from a December 21st meeting of the High School Repurposing Committee. How am I doing? Good? Um, where they have hired, yeah. they had hired a, a lady called Liz Curry who, as their consultant, and she advised them that um, this type of project that they're entering into it has many unpredictable twists and turns, and that it takes much longer than expected to complete. Um, the solution for the floodway and floodplain issue is uh, can be resolved by going into a subdividing once again. Um, the subdividing will require another survey to take place. And um, besides the, the cost of the survey, um, the adjoining uh, budding landowners would need to be notified for a 30-day period. And um, then there would be legal to draw up new deeds. So I anticipate that to be another three months uh, down the road. Um, at that point, um, perhaps that would remove the floodway problem, but we would still be gifted with the floodplain issue uh, in anything that we apply for for grants. Um, so with that said on, on, on that, we're also looking at a timeline with the, uh, the Brella program that is going on. And I'm sure Catherine will probably bring some updated information into this. Um, the hazmat testing on their spreadsheet is starting on February 5th and expects to be completed by May 6th of this year. Um, that puts it beyond the town meeting. And so we would want to have that information at hand to present to the voters. So we're thinking of delaying the vote beyond town meeting day and hopefully have a vote maybe sometime during 2023 in a special meeting. Thank you, I understood all of that, thank you. Okay. Catherine, Catherine if you can unmute. Or maybe I can unmute you. I almost wonder, Catherine, if once you get on there and you mute your phone, if you're sort of stuck that way. Um, I don't know if you want to get out and I can let you back in. I'm not sure, but you're still muted. She could just call me back and I could put it on speakerphone here. Mm -hmm. Or I can go get the other phone. If you want to um, call Dune's cell phone, um, Catherine, he can put you on. Oh, okay, bye. She's gone. <laughs> okay. I bet she'll call you. She'll, she'll come running down. <laughs> All right, here we go. Hey there. So um, I'm just going to give you an update. Let me just quickly say about the the floodway. We it, it was determined that by uh, our own zoning commission that we 
don't need to do uh, anything more than a property adjustment, property boundary adjustment, and the school has voted to okay that. So now it's back to um, Dubois King, and they're doing the survey for that property uh, boundary adjustment. So it's very minimal. And the other thing is the floodway remediation is just putting in, sealing off that uh, door uh, where the water came in during Irene, which is the lower door uh, on the uh, left side of the auditorium, and then just putting in another door further up that aisle. So I just wanted to update you on the environmental assessments uh, based on uh, meetings this week uh, with Sarah Wright and, uh, and the crew. So Two Rivers themselves have used up their grant funds. They're now depleted, and, and, but we were in there for all of our phase one. Uh, the consultants finished that, uh, and we are still waiting for the reports, which you, we are expected to get by the end of the month. When we get that phase one report, <clears throat> which should be released, as I just said, uh, that's uh, that it would be best for the town to be fully enrolled in the Brella program. They put in their application and the next step is up for the town to speak with Sarah Bartlett at the Department of Environmental Conservation and do what they call a pre-application interview. So Pat, if you want to do that, Vic and I will join you in that call to fully support you. But that is very important. They're waiting for us to initiate that call so we can become fully en enrolled in the umbrella program. So the hazmat assessment will uh, assess, you know, the PCBs, the lead, the mold, and any asbestos. And that's to be released by mid-March. So upon completion of phase one and the hazmat assessment, phase two can then begin. And this involves the physical examination of the property and testing. It will determine if the hazmats are below the established threshold levels or not. If they are below the established levels, then there's no more work to be done. If they're above the threshold levels, then more testing may be required. And in that case, also remediation options be identified. So the town should definitely be fully enrolled by Brella before phase two begins in order to be eligible for state funding for testing and cleanup. There is plenty of money. It just won't come from two rivers. Uh, and that, so the department, DEC, Department of Environmental Conservation, will be a good source of that. So the phase two sampling work should take about three months and if there is if there's no snow cover on the property. Therefore, if phase two starts in March, then the completion of phase two could be expected around August, assuming the normal processing timelines. Thus the town's yes no vote on the acquisition uh, could be would be better informed with all the information from the comprehensive environmental assessment after August, given the timeline that I just gave. And it's we just received this timeline this week. It's the first time it was ever given to us uh, from Two Rivers. So the cleanup work plan would then follow the sampling work, and that would take another three months. And then remediation and cleanup, the time requirement will depend, of course, on what they discover there. So uh, the town does not have to actually own the site to enroll in Brella, and neither does the site have to make it, uh, the town have to make a commitment to acquiring the building until after phase two is complete. So there's no risk to the town. In fact, there's every reason for the town to go through this process right on through phase two. Also, as we're told, having the town as the applicant as the potential buyer uh, of, of the property uh, for cleanup funds is more advantageous than having any kind of private entity or nonprofit or a developer. So then I want to also speak uh, about the uh, uh, underground 10,000 fuel tank, gallon fuel tank. So the removal of that buried oil tank during phase two process is important so that the soil below the tank can be assessed for the presence of oil. An above ground replacement oil tank, which may not have to be to the extent the extent of the capacity of the ones underground now could be temporarily installed to make sure the building maintains a level of heat. The other thing, um, all right, so does anybody have any questions about a lot? That was a lot of information and I will definitely email it to Martha and to the select board um, for your, you know, 
for your better digestion of the information that I just gave. Is there any question? No. You... Did anybody hear me? Yeah, yes. I explained we that very, very clearly. Martha had okay. her hand up on So you. I'm glad I'm not talking to myself here. No, no. I, mean, I just I just wanted to say uh, I think I, I I've, I've been having trouble hearing people a little. I think I heard Catherine say she might be emailing what she was talking about to me. And I would really appreciate if that was possible by tomorrow morning, because I would have to write it up for the paper tomorrow. I will email what I just said to the select board and to Martha and to anybody else who would like to have that email to them. They just have to let me know. Just email Thank you, me. Catherine. Thank okay. you, Catherine. I appreciate it very much. And then I want to just also say that because uh, I'm a member of the uh, RSUD Heat Task Force, that I want to announce to the select board that the school district reversed itself about heating the school for next winter. They are including it in the budget. And so far, it looks like all three legs of the proposal for the heating has are all on board there will be no problem covering the heat this for this winter so i thought that might come as a relief to the town to know that that's all being done and covered and that the school board is going to take over next year for heating the building great um thank you is that is that it that's what I had to say. Um, I am going to put a report together for Julie's uh, for Julie, getting yep. it to her. When was that deadline, Julie? Uh, next week. Next week. Yeah. What day next week? Uh, or if you can get it to me in the, earlier in the week, it's great. But um, the middle of the week is fine. All right. All right. Well, thank you, Catherine. I'm glad we were able to overcome the. Uh, technological glitches here and get you uh, in the meeting yeah i, I don't understand it, it the uh, zoom kept saying that the host was muting me but it sounded like you were unmuting me and i was not on mute so i don't know what the problem was yeah huh. maybe automatically mute the phone i don't know okay but we we okay. overcame it thank you okay yeah i'm gonna um take you off the phone but you can still hang to hear the rest of the meeting, I think. Yes. Okay. Yes. All right. But I do. Yeah. Okay. Um, well, that's nice that they um, agreed to heat the building. Mm -hmm. yeah. Next year. Next year. That sounds like they got it together for this year, too. All right. Um, now we're um, on to item four on our agenda which is the uh do we need to vote on anything that we aren't going to we, vote on that or what we decided we that we're not going to be voting right. yeah we just i think it's clear we're not, yeah we're not announcing a, a vote for that i think i don't think yeah, we no have vote. to no vote. vote that we're not voting <laughs> right well yeah. I, don't, yeah, but, yeah, it's a, I think it's clear it's pretty clear right? that we are okay. voting on it anyway <laughs> the um Hey Neighbor Community event, um, which was announced at the last meeting, um, has been changed to March 12th at, uh, um, to be determined location from 11 till 3. And if um, people weren't at the last meeting, not sure what this is about. It's for um, people that might be new to the town or that have been here for a long while or if they have services to provide or a business in the community or looking for employment opportunities, looking for employees, looking for volunteer opportunities. Um, basically, this is just a um, welcome mat to the uh, community, to um, newcomers and old comers alike. And that's, um, that's what that is. So I guess we'll, um, in a future meeting, we will uh, announce where exactly that will be held. Um, I have library. A, oh, I have yep. a couple items yep. that you can put in now or later. Well, go for it. Um, VLCT has informed us that uh, with the legislative session coming in, um, one of the first things they're going to work on is uh, a temporary uh, act, Act 78, that was put in place for. Um, 
allowing towns to have their meetings via Zoom. Um, that Act 78, uh, there's 77 and 79 are also part of it. Um, sunsets, January 15th, therefore after that there's, there, there's no more um, actual requirement for Zoom. Um, although, so our next meeting could be susceptible where we would not have, we could not do it via Zoom unless we still voted ourselves. Um, but I do believe that the legislature is going to extend that because it seems to be a very popular um, mm -hmm. avenue for people to attend meetings. So they anticipate that these acts will be extended into a permanent Zoom platform will be acceptable across mm -hmm. the board. But at this point in time, we're still in the temporary one until Ju January 15th. And on January 15th, um, there, there will be no more Zoom participation. So is it optional or, is it, or it will be not authorized? I think that's what they're going to vote on. They're going to vote on. Yeah. Right. Right. So that's just a tidbit. Martha has a comment on your tidbit. Yeah, I'm sorry. I couldn't hear it very well. But if my understanding that um, it's possible that after January 15th, you won't have Zoom anymore, Zoom meetings offered anymore unless the town, the select board votes on to do it themselves. Is that what, what that said, what you said? Um, yes, yes. Well, I, can I put in a vote for please, 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 please? <laughs> Could you keep the Zoom? I can't, I can't get to the meetings in person because I can't get up the stairs and the lift is unreliable sometimes. So it would be better, I mean, I, and I know there are other people that, that prefer to come via Zoom if possible, like Jeff Kephart and others. So if at all possible, if you could continue to do it that way, I'd really appreciate it because I can do my job that way. I have the feeling the legislator, your legislators will vote on your behalf. Will vote what? I'm sorry. But it will vote hear. on your behalf to keep Zoom platform They're in the meetings. Okay, yeah. thank you. Sorry, I, I really am I'm having a hard time hearing you, Pat. I don't know why because, you know, normally I don't. Sorry. And something else? Oh, uh, yes, I have to find it to read it. Um, here we go. Back. Back. I should have printed it. Oh, there it is. No one's looking at you, it's fine. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, I got a letter <clears throat> via email from Deborah Pierce, State of Vermont, today. Congratulations on your project's successful application to the 2022 Safe Routes to School Infrastructure Program. Your project was approved to improve the sidewalk extension and pedestrian crossings at Brook Street and Vermont Route 100 in Rochester. The project was selected among seven applications statewide. So um, that is a go. As indicated in the application guide, these improvements will be designed, put out to bid, and overseen by VTRANS. The town will be required to sign a grant agreement that will allow the state to perform work within the town highway right-of-way and committing to maintaining the improvements once constructed. Your project will be governed by the terms of the grant agreement with VTRANS, including all applicable state and federal program requirements. Um, they anticipate, uh, we anticipate having our engineer begin working on the project no later than March of 2023. So this is something that will be 100% funded and um, is, in, is in the pipeline. It's a go. That's good timing because even with the lack of snow we've had, that sidewalk has taken mm. a pretty big hit it with sure the plowing. Has. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah it, it knew that its time was up, I think. Yeah. So that's great. Thank yeah, you. Good. That is good. That needed it. All right. Um, Tony, did you have anything else from the library, or is that uh, we had a lot of library excitement earlier? Yeah, you did. We did. Uh, we will have a trustees meeting tomorrow at 5.30 at the library. <clears throat> and we're still working with, uh, or still having masks uh, when people go in there. Uh, yeah. Okay. No Zoom? 
Uh, I think yes, they do if they want to. Yeah. yeah. Okay. All right. Yeah. Um, anything from the highway? Uh, I had John look at um, get some uh, just a look and see what what it would cost to get a sweeper mounted on our bucket, a sweeper attachment for our bucket. Uh, for a couple reasons, uh, for spring cleanup around the village and, and park cleanup long term, and plus with all the new drainage at the bottom of uh, right there by the firehouse and that pavement, it, what happens is all that silt's going to be running into that mm -hmm. into that uh, wastewater disposal there, and you know it's going to cause a lot more clogging if we yeah. don't. So an attachment. So we're still. I just got it this afternoon. Look at you know he got one quote on it. So it's around fifteen grand. I I'm gonna talk some to him about it mm -hmm. to see if there's any other costs involved. I think it would be a handy piece of equipment to have in in the spring, especially for sidewalks. We can uh, sweep them off and clean up around the village a little bit, plus do the park in the spring when in the fall for leaf removal and that stuff. They work pretty good on grass, so they can, you know, go through and clean stuff up a little bit. So I'm just weighing whether or not we want to even think about the money that way, so I just have to address that. And but other than that, he's hauling sand, keeping, keeping things going, hopefully, and Everything's working so far. He's had a few problems, but not too many. Yeah. Yeah. Knock on wood. Yeah. Um, is Terry on Zoom or no? No. And Jeff Gephardt is out? Correct. No. Any updates on grants? Really? Just, well, that's a good one, Pat, that you gave. <laughs> yeah, Pat yeah. took one of my items, but yeah. it was yours to present, so <laughs> good work on that. Um, I have it. Oh, Nancy. So we submitted um, a tree grant also uh, the end of December. And we are not exactly sure when we'll hear whether we receive it or not. And that's a match grant in kind, is that correct? Um, two to one. Yeah, in kind. Though. In, in yeah. kind. Yeah. Is that for maintenance or new trees or both? It's for some new trees mm -hmm. and planting, mulching. What kind of trees? The trees at the east end of the park and the south side of the park are green ash trees. Mm -hmm. And the state urban tree group feel that they are going to be most susceptible to the emerald ash borer. Mm -hmm and that we should be considering um, underplanting mm -hmm. because ultimately 13, no, it 11 trees are go probably going to be going. Mm -hmm. So if we start now, we'll have some height on those trees by the time this so what, happens. So what kind of trees are you thinking of planting? Um, we're not exactly sure yet, but some of them will be some maple, but we're working with a um, what do you call them, arborist? Um, and the state is, will make some recommendations on trees also. All right. We'll get the money and then we'll go. Mm -hmm. we'll see what happens then. Yeah. And they want to mix it up too. They don't want just any yeah. one brand yeah. around yeah, there. And, and, it's and, a variety. Uh, kind of put it's a variety one of the up. problems is they're all ash on the east side and going down the south. Mm -hmm. and. So they would like to, they recommend it being um, a, variety. a variety of trees. It makes sense. Yeah. Yeah. And plus work on the secession planning that yep. really needs to happen there. Some of those trees are in tough shape. And we had a lot of damage out there during that last storm. Yeah. All right. Um, we don't have anything under the old business. Anything come to mind that you guys want to talk about? Any more grants? Oh, any yeah. more grants? A little bit of grant stuff. A little bit of grant um, stuff. On December 30th, we received our second reimbursement for Fisk Road, our final reimbursement of 
$244.42. Um, and then the last thing is we received the final um, West Hill contract today. Um, we did find, a, Julie looked at it really quick and found a typo um, for the final seal bid due date. Um, it says in there Friday, February 9th, but that's actually a Thursday. Um, and she um, responded asking if perhaps we could change that to Monday, February 13th um, for a select board meeting. So we're waiting to hear on that. Um, and then once we get that, then we can get it sealed and sent off and then put up on Friday to go out for the bids yeah. to so go out. So out the bid on, in February? No, Friday. No, like right. Friday. This, oh, this, like the this 13th. Friday? Yeah. If you yeah. if you okay, what? Um, I sent it. Um, excuse did, me, yes, Kristen. Thank you. Excuse me, Kristen. The second one, I didn't hear exactly what that was for. You received the final what? West Hill Grant contract. West Hill Grant contract. Thank you. Thank you. Yep. Sorry to bother you. Nope, it's okay. Um, and Julie did email that to you guys if you want to take one final look at it. Um, he's looking to meet with us on Thursday just to gear us up for Friday's bid release. Mm -hmm. So, and that's it. All right. Sounds good. Um, anyone out in the public with any comments tonight? I think we've had enough. Zoom's quiet. Zoom's quiet. Well, Thank you all for coming, and boy, not even an hour tonight. Yeah, right. Cool. Go home, put more wood in the fire. <laughs> Thank you. Bye, guys. Move to adjourn. Thank you. Yeah. Recording. Oh, Sorry, I'm. Sorry, I'm. Thank you.